Okay, what I'm showing you today is the Fowler Silvac Hi-Cal. Fowler number 54-931-300. It comes in a 6 inch and a 12 inch. What we're working with today is a 12 inch. I'm going to first go over the physical characteristics of the gauge uh, before we actually go into the operation of the gauge. As I said, it comes in a 6 and a 12 inch. This is the 12 inch. It does all your basic measurements, IDs, ODs, center lines, heights, widths, depths, slots. It has a min, max, TIR feature. Uh, the unique thing about this gauge is that you've got a small footprint here. So it's very good with small pots. We're on a small surface plate, 18 by 18 inches, and as you see, we have plenty of room for your pots to measure. Um, it also has a motorized carriage. So uh, there's no operator feel when taking our measurements. Okay, it has direct hour 232 output. <clears throat> It has a rechargeable battery. You see the see the output, and we just plug it in. Uh, when, it's, when it's plugged in and fully charged, you get uh, about uh, 24 hours of battery life. Okay, you can leave it on the charger if you like while you're using it. That's not going to harm it as well. Uh, okay, so now let's operate the gauge, and we'll power the gauge up by hitting this key here. Okay, now what's going to happen is the gauge is going to reference itself. And so it's going to go through its movement, going up the scale. And basically what it's doing now is initializing the scale. Okay, what's going to happen is it's going to zero off of the surface plate. Okay, and it's going to be displaying the green light saying it took a hit. There's our um, display showing the zeros off of the surface plate. You notice it's got 50 million resolution. The gauge is accurate to two tenths over the range on the 12 inch and a tenth and a half over the range of a six inch. Okay, and again, uh, the uh, resolution is 50 millions. So we're seeing reference one here because we can have two datums. We can have reference one or reference two. I like to call reference one my main datum. Okay, so now we're now that we've got the gauge on, we've referenced it. Let's qualify the probe so we can tell the gauge what it is that we're working with for a probe. So. I'm going to come up here, I'm going to hit this key, which is a probe icon. Okay, now what I'm going to do is reference the probe. And to do that, what I'm doing is I'm going to come down here on this surface. You hear that we get, um, we get a beep and we get a green light telling us we've got our measurement. Okay, now I'm going to go to the top, I mean the bottom here, come straight up. Okay, and again we've made our hit. So now we've qualified this probe. If you want to check the qualification of the probe, what I like to do is I like to come up here, and I'll hit zero here, and then I'll come on the other side and I should be pretty close to zero here. And there we are with an attempt. Okay? So now we've, we've qualified our probe, and we do that because we've got a finished surface here, and we have a finished surface underneath here, and they're both on the same plane, they're parallel. Okay? So any parallel surface will work if it for qualifying your probe. All right. So now we're ready to measure. So I'm just going to come down here on the surface plate, set zero, okay, and we're off and measuring. And the way we measure with this gauge is we've got a paddle here. The, uh, when I hit the upper portion of the paddle, it raises the probe. When I hit the lower portion, it lowers the probe. Okay, so you can see that it's motorized. The nice thing about this is that I can come down on the surface plate very slow, okay, and get my zero off of the surface plate. Or, I can come down very quickly, and it's still going to give me my zero. Okay, so, either your, your, your most experienced operator or your least experienced operator are always going to get the same readings. Uh, this key is your diameter key and surface key. So when I hit it once, it goes into diameter mode, and when we're in diameter mode, we can do as many IDs, ODs, and center lines as we like without hitting any other keys. And you'll see that in a moment. So it toggles me in and out. Okay. Reference key, we have reference 2, reference 1. The reference is up in the upper left corner, as I said earlier. We can maintain two datums throughout the range of the gauge. Probe constant key, you've already seen that in action when we got our probe constant. This is our min, max, and TIR key. Minimum, maximum, and delta, or run out. You max minus your min. Okay? So, <clears throat> it just scrolls you around. Okay? 
Okay. Uh, so the, the other key we have here is a set key for setting our zero and also if we have a preset in there we can use that key for our preset as well. This is our setup key. The setup key allows us to put in different parameters to actually set up the configuration of the gauge. Okay, but 90% of the time, as you'll see, we're just going to be using this little key down here called our function key. Okay, and I've configured this function key to go from diameter to surface plate. Okay, so we'll be using this key. We'll be using the set key for most of our measurements. Okay, so now we're going to take a measurement. I'm going to bring the probe down to the surface plate. When I do that, you hear the beep, you see the green light, you see the arrow. So now I'm going to set zero off of the surface plate. Okay, and then I'm going to come up here and take a measurement. So here's my first measurement. Okay, now I want to get the step measurement. So I'm going to go to reference two, set zero off of this land. Okay, and come up here and get the step. And there I am. So that's the step distance. And now if I want the distance from that land to the surface plate, well, I have that back in reference one. Okay? So now let's get do something a little more difficult. Let's try to get the center line of this slot to the center line of this slot. Okay, it's a common measurement, but it's not always an easy measurement. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go into diameter mode. Okay? And we're going to treat this slot like it's a diameter. So I'm going to come down make contact. Now I'm going to hit this key. When I do, watch the probe. It's going to move by itself. So I don't have to touch the paddles at this point. Okay? So there's the slot width and then there's the center line. So I'm going to hit this key again and it's going to take the load off of that and I'm going to set zero off of this center line. Okay? Now I'm going to come down here, take this slot. Alright, hit this key again. It's going to go straight up, okay, and there you have the slot width, and then there's the center line. So that's the deviation of the center line of that slot to the center line of this slot. Okay, when I take this off, it's going to take the load off, okay, and there you have it. Okay, now that we've done the slots, we're going to do some true diameters here. Now, in doing the slots, we kind of tricked the gauge into thinking we were doing a diameter because we wanted to get the center line of those slots. Uh, Doing a, when doing a true diameter, we're going to work with the radius of the diameter, as you'll see. So, I'm going to hit this key to go into diameter mode. Okay. Now, I'm going to come into the lower part of that radius. I'm going to come down. When I'm sweeping a diameter, what I want to do is I want to sweep to the lowest point of that radius, and when I do that, it's going to automatically capture the low point of that radius. Okay, you'll see that the numbers will freeze. Once I've passed the low point, I'm going to hit the function key. So automatically you're going to go to the top, and I sweep across now the high point of the diameter. When I do that, it'll automatically capture the high point, and it'll give us our diameter in our center line automatically. Okay? Now when I hit this key, it'll take the load off. I can now go to reference 2 here, set 0 off of the center line, and go up here to my next diameter. So I'm going to come in again a little bit off center, sweep across. Hit the function key, it's going to raise the probe, sweep across, here's my diameter. And then there's my center line distance from this diameter to this diameter. Okay? I'm going to take the load off. I'm going to go to reference 1, and it's going to show me the distance from the center line of that to the surface plate. Okay, so we've done some center line distances from this diameter to this diameter. Now we're going to do an OD. The way we do an OD is the same way. We basically go in a little bit off center of the radius, lower radius first. I come up, make contact, and I sweep across. Now here we're going to have to use the paddle in the back to raise the probe because we're doing an OD. Now I'm going to come down on the top of the upper radius, sweep across, and then once I pass the center point, there's my diameter. So it's giving me the diameter in the center line. Okay, and that's the center line from the surface plate to the center of the, uh, of the OD. Okay, now say we want to find out how parallel that OD is to the ID. Again, I can go to reference 2. I'll set 0 off of that OD, and I'm going to go in and do the ID. Simply come down, sweep across, hit this key, go to the top. Okay, sweep across, 
and then there's the diameter of the ID, and then there's the deviation of the center line. And if I hit this key again, it'll take the load off. Okay? So you see how quick, how easily and how quickly we can do an OD and an ID. All right? Now, earlier I mentioned that we have this other key up here, and that's our min, max, and TIR key. So if I, I'm going to come out of diameter measurement, go to surface measurement, and I'm going to hit minimum. And again, here what it does is it basically comes in on a minimum, and it'll lock on that minimum. Okay, if I want to do a maximum, I just hit this key again, it'll go to max, and then I come up here and it'll lock on the max. Okay, if I want to do uh, a delta, I'll hit this key, and let's just say we want to find out the run out of this surface, or how parallel this surface is to the surface plate. I simply come down, sweep across here, and it's going to give us the max minus the min of that surface, and it'll give us a direct reading. Okay, so that's your min, max, and delta key. Okay, and com to come out of that, I hit it again and it scrolls me out of that. Okay, so we've covered basic measurements, basic height measurements, basic step measurements, slot measurements, diameters, IDs, and ODs. Uh, now, there's something I want to show you here, like on a, on a pot, for example. Okay. Again, what I want to stress is the size of this gauge, how much it does and how accurate it is. So that if you have small pots and you have a small surface plate, now you have a height gauge that can accommodate both of those. So now I'm just going to show you how versatile this little gauge is uh, for, a, for a typical pot. Okay, we've got a small pot here, we've got it in a uh, vise, we're on a small surface plate. So we've got a small gauge with a small footprint with accuracy of two tenths over the range. Okay, so now what can we do here? Well, let's, um, first of all, let's just zero off of the surface plate. Okay, is that zero? We can come over here now and uh, uh, do a diameter. So I'm gonna hit the diameter key. Now, uh, what I've done is I've configured this key for going from surface plate to di going from surfaces to diameter. So rather than having to come up here and reach for that key, I can hit this key and it'll automatically put me in diameter mode. Okay, so I'm going to come down a little bit off center, sweep across, hit this key, go directly up, sweep across. Okay, there's the diameter. I take the load off. There's the center line. I can go to reference two here. Set zero that center line, and say I want to do the OD of this pot, I can come, come up. Sweep across. All right. Come down. Sweep across. There's the diameter, okay? And then there's the center line deviation, okay? So now let's just say we want to find out what this little slot with this in the center line of the slot. So again, we'll set zero here. But now we're going to go into this little slot. Okay, and this is where this is where the the diameter feature really helps. Was when I come down on that slot. It's a very small slot, so I just hit that key and it's automatically going to go to the top itself. So I'm not having to struggle with the motorized carriage of this. And I take the load off. And there's the deviation, the center line of the slot to the center line of the diameter. So you see, in, in a short period of time, I've gotten the diameter, I've gotten the center line of that diameter, I've gotten the center line of that diameter to the, from the ID to the OD, I've gotten the center line of that slot, I've got the slot width and the center line of that slot to the center line of the um, ID. So there's a lot of quick measurements there. Okay, one other thing I wanted to make mention is this motorized carriage is free floating. So it gives you the ability to just, just move the carriage by itself. So I'm, I'm in max mode here, for example, and I can just get underneath the carriage and it'll automatically take my readings for me and then lock, obviously, on the max, okay? So I can then take my next pot, come up. So here I'm not even using the gauge. I'm just using the carriage. So I sweep across. 
So if you've got a lot of pots, all you have to do is make contact, sweep it across, and you can see how well it's repeating. And that's what that's the nice thing about that floating carriage, the floating motorized carriage. Okay, let's recap. This is the Fowler Silvac High Cal, Fowler number 54-931-300. That's the 12 inch. It comes in a 12 and a 6 inch. The 6 inch number is 54-931-150. Okay, the gauge does all your basic measurements, IDs, ODs, center lines, heights, widths, depths, slots. It's got 50 million resolution. The accuracy of the 12 inch is 2 tenths over the range, and the 6 inch is a tenth and a half over the range. It's got a motorized carriage, so when I hit this lever, I hit the upper, it raises it. When I hit the lower, it lowers it. It's got direct RS 232 output as well as USB output. It's got a um, uh, self charging uh, battery, so uh, we can plug it in. It'll be charged up for 24 hours. It also has a foot switch if, if need be. Um, the gauge comes with uh, a basic standard probe. Uh, and it comes with a probe qualifier. There are accessory probes that you can use with this gauge, this is, it, but it does come with this standard uh, four millimeter probe. Also comes with a five year warranty. The gauge can be used out on the shop floor, right next to your machine on a small surface plate. Here we have an 18 by 18 inch surface plate. The nice thing about this gauge is it's small footprint, so when you're doing small parts uh, on a small plate, this gauge fits wonderfully. So this is a this is a must-have gauge for anybody that's doing small pots.